Welcome to the solutions to the work, power, and energy problem set, problems one, two, and five. We start off with a couple of conceptual questions here with number one, A, can the kinetic energy of a system be negative, explain, and B, can the gravitational potential energy of a system be negative and explain? For A, let's start out with the equation to calculate kinetic energy which is K equals one-half mv squared. And what we can see by analysis is, one, that the mass would always be positive because there's, because uh, it's a scalar quantity. It's just an amount of matter. And that V could either be positive or negative, but that it's squared. So even if the velocity was negative and it, and it ends up being squared, so overall, we're multiplying a positive by a positive, and therefore, kinetic energy will always be a positive value. For B, can the gravitational potential energy of a system be negative? Let's start with the, again with the equation that represents gravitational potential energy, UG equals MGH. Uh, mass uh, is always positive, as we talked about in the previous example. Little g can be positive or negative depending on if it's going up or going down. Uh, you, uh, though acceleration due to gravity is always down. That's not what I meant as far as is if it's going up or going down, but if the pro in the problem if the object is going up or going down. So acceleration due to gravity is always down uh, and has a standard value of 9.8. But really the answer depends on this h value. Let me let me explain that. If this dotted line represents the base level at which we're assigning the height of the object to be zero. Here's the object itself, and the object goes up, down, and then goes below the base level. This would represent, above the dotted line, would represent uh, an H value being positive. Below that dotted line would be an H value that is negative. So there are cases in which the gravitational potential energy of a system can be negative. And the reason for that is, is that if the object travels below its the assigned base level, then it would have a negative height. Okay? Two, if the speed of the particle is doubled, what happens to its kinetic energy? And then in B, if the net work on an object is zero, what can be said about its speed? So the speed of a particle is doubled, what happens to its kinetic energy? So for A here, Let's start off with k equals one-half mv squared. And what we see here in this problem is that k equals one-half m. And as we've discussed in situations past, we're doubling v. We're not doubling v squared. So we're doubling v and then squaring it. Well, clearly what would happen here this would be 1 half m 4 v squared. And of course, this means that that would quadruple the value of the kinetic energy. They like to change uh, variables by some factor and then ask you for the impact on the overall quantity. And this is an example of that question. For B, if the network on a particle is zero, what can be said about its speed? This question you can see by the wording, it's asking you to relate work and speed somehow. This is a great application of the work energy theorem. And in this case, if it's asking you for the uh, impact on the speed, then clearly the change in mechanical energy that needs to be taking place here is kinetic. Okay? Now, before we proceed here, in order to have a change in kinetic, that means there has to be a change in anything that causes kinetic energy to calculate it. So what I'm saying to you is, in order to have a change in kinetic, there either has to be a change in mass or a change in velocity. I've never seen an example where it's due to a change in mass, so we'll just talk about change in velocity. So this would be 1 half m delta v squared. So there has to be a change in that velocity, okay? Uh, in, 
order for there to be a change in kinetic. Now, what would this look like? W equals one half m v squared. So the change in kinetic would be one half m v squared minus one half m v o squared. So it changes final minus initial. This expression represents the final kinetic energy, and this expression represents the initial kinetic energy. So the change would be final minus initial. Now back to the question, they're saying the network done is zero. What does that mean? That means there was no change in the speed of this object because there's no change in the kinetic energy. So that means delta k is zero. That also means that there's no change in the object's velocity. All right, lastly, number five. A weight lifter ha lifts a 350 Newton set of weights from ground level to a position over his head, a vertical distance of two meters. I believe this technique is called the clean and jerk um, in weightlifting. And they wanted to know how much work does a weightlifter do assuming he moves the weights at a constant speed. Okay? So every time you're asked to calculate work, probably the first thing that pops into your head is that W equals F delta R cosine theta. All right? Let's go over to the diagram that I've included here of this behemoth Russian doing this uh, weightlifting. And in order for him to get the weights from ground level down here that I'm marking in blue, up to this spot right here, which we're told uh, that delta R value is 2 meters, and he's doing that at constant speed, what force does he have to overcome? Clearly, this is why it's called weightlifting, because he has to overcome the force that he applies, F here, has to overcome the weight that he's lifting. If done at constant speed, what's the relationship between F and the weight? That's a summation of forces question. At constant speed, there's no acceleration. So the upward force must equal the weight that he's lifting. That's important here because now that establishes for us what we substitute as far as the force is concerned. So our force is equal to the weight of the object times delta r cosine theta. All right, let's substitute. We've got a weight of 350 newtons. We've got a delta r uh, of 2 meters. What is the angle between that force and that displacement? Well, this force that I'm circling in red and this displacement are both up. So since they're in the same direction, that is the cosine of zero degrees. And you should know the cosine of zero is one. Okay. So the work done would be 700 newtons. Okay. All right. A few introductory problems on work and energy, and more to come on the other problems that we have in this assignment, one through eight, in class tomorrow.